Welcome to a special edition of the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. Today's podcast features the best guest discussions and interviews you may have missed from this week's episodes of Undisputed. From Ty Law on the Patriots to Ice Cube on the Lakers, we've got a star-studded show. So skip Shannon, let's get to it. The last time we saw the Patriots defense on the field, they were giving up 41 points to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And last year, the New England defense was ranked 29th out of 32 teams. Despite that, the Patriots are still the favorite to win it all heading into this season. Mm. Now joined by Super Bowl champ and former Patriot Ty Law. Welcome to Undisputed. Quick, quick thought. <laughs> you were a finalist for the Hall of Fame this year. Yes. You would definitely get my vote. Thank you very you, you much. You belong in the Hall that. of Fame. I really believe that. Tell them about uh, that uh, pick six you had in that Super Bowl, <clears throat> that first one y'all won. Oh, yeah, it was a little something. It was a little, little something. something. You know, yeah. I, I guess I got some help from Mike Vrabel, but uh, you know, he, he you know, I this took, man, I took he, it to the house. I called a... and took it to the house. That's all hey. that matter right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Difference maker. Yeah. <laughs> Especially against Peyton Manning. Whew. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Well, onward, we are upward. lucky to have you here, yep. and we're going to talk about that Patriots defense. Uh, are they good enough to win the Super Bowl? I think they are good enough, you know, because they're still going to ride the coattails of Tom Brady mm-hmm. and that offense. So anytime as a <laughs> defensive well player, I like that. Anytime as a defensive mm. player no. that you have a guy like Tom Brady, you have confidence. You know, it, it, you you have a mm. you have margin for error a little bit mm-hmm. because you know that he is capable of making up for some of the mistakes that you that you may that may occur out there on the field. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think they can do it. And like you said, they gave up 500 yards in the Super Bowl. Still almost won. It was only a play or two away. I mean, right. you could have still did something with that. Mm-hmm. And right now, the strength of that team is the secondary. The ones that gave up 500 yards. Now you got Stephon Gilmore, who is now establishing himself he as is. the best defender yep. on the field. Mm-hmm. You know, it took him a while. But now, going up in the training camp, they're actually ready to lock him up on the top dog. I asked you, Coach you Belichick. Went to, you went to, yes, yeah. I went to the training yeah. camp. Okay. So, Coach Belichick, I asked him personally. I said, is he ready? If, if you have to match him up on Antonio Brown, mm-hmm. can you do it? He said, absolutely. He said he will do it. He said he probably won't, but he trusts him. But he'll match, uh, match him up on the second receiver and double and Antonio coverage. Coverage and roll mm-hmm. coverage. You know? yeah. But if it came down to it, he will do it. So that's saying a lot coming from Coach Belichick. Yeah, I, I think if, and to, to echo what uh, Ty said is that this is how they win, Skip. The defense basically says, look, if we can hold you to 24 under, we're going to win every game because we believe Tom Brady is going to get to that magic number. So if we can keep you to 23, we good. Hmm. They just happen to give up 17 more than, <laughs> than, than the 24 they normally right. give up. Skip, you give up 41 points. The problem that they have defensively is they don't have that one guy that you say, you know what, go get home since they had Chandler Jones. Mm-hmm. Chandler Jones was that right. one guy. And teams have, you know, they have a Von Miller, you have a J.J. Watt, or you Khalil Max Skip, where you say, okay, you just call your defense, Go, go, go get home, dog. Right. That's what you can do. They got to scheme you. And sometimes, and that's what happened in the Super Bowl. They couldn't get pressure. Mm-hmm. Well, if, I don't care how good your secondary is. You don't put that quarterback on the ground or you don't make him move off that spot, mm. he going to pick you apart. They'll eat you alive. These guys are too good now. They're going to complete 60%. Mm-hmm. And that's what Nick Foles did. They couldn't generate enough pressure consistently, Skip. They couldn't make him get off that spot. And he was just like, it was just like 7-on-7. Seven seven. Mm-hmm. He was like pitch, catch, pitch, catch. And next thing you know, they're over 500 yards of total offense, and they got 41 points. But can they win the Super Bowl? Yes, because we've seen them win Super Bowls without household names. Skip believes that unless you have a J.J. Water, you got a Deion Sanders, your defense isn't good. But the way I'm you sure guys play team defense. That. Right. <laughs> I never saw that. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I know how you do, though. But by the way, oh. Mr. Sharp, mm-hmm. did you hear what the law said? Yeah. That the defense can ride the coattails of Tom Brady and the offense? Yeah. Is that not frame it for you? Does that not put it all into perspective? No. Because that's what's been happening, especially over the last four or five years in New England as the defense has sunk and sunk and sunk to 29th in yards allowed last year. And but then they were top five in points allowed. Points. points allowed. I give Man, you but that. Don't break. But all of a sudden, they broke. Yeah. Right. Against the Philadelphia Eagles, they broke. Wor- worst place you could break on the Super Bowl stage, you give up 538 yards. 
you, you let them rush for 164, which that's that's where it all starts, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's all going to go really bad from there. <laughs> right, right. And the backup quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles throws for 373 and three touchdowns, and you are cooked. You give up 41 points? Right, but I don't think what? it was a defensive, great defensive game by the Philadelphia Eagles it either. Was. <laughs> you know what I mean? They gave up a lot of points, but I understand we're concentrating on the Patriots right here, but the – key to this defense is the secondary. I don't think that will happen again because the way they're going to approach teams okay, but week in, week I, I out. They do have to get to the pass rush. I, I understand that. I, mean, I still haven't gotten the over the fact that Malcolm Butler, who was right there with Stephon Gilmore as the best defensive back, didn't play a lick in the Super Bowl. I still well, do don't you know get why? it. No, I wish, could you please Yes, explain? I will tell you because it was already in the making that Rowe, Eric he was Rowe, Eric Rowe yeah. was going to be taking that spot anyway. Okay. So, yes, he should have played. I agree absolutely 100% that Malcolm Butler should have been out there on the Lee field. I think sunk? the way they went about it was the wrong way, right. but this was in the making for a long time. Hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't have a lot of detail for detail, but okay. from players that I've talked to, this was has been in the making. So, And Malcolm is a good friend of mine. I, I love Malcolm. I mean, what he's done for his career for the Super Bowl, New England Patriots organization, was outstanding. But... He was on his way out, and okay. Eric Rowe was ready to step in, and they decided to do it for whatever reason that, that none of us know on the Super Bowl. Please don't do it that game. I, I agree. <laughs> I, say, don't, I mean, I say find him, sit him down, whatever the case was, don't let him start for, you know, the first two series, yeah. uh, but put him in there because I really believe that Malcolm Butler, if he was in, difference. it would have been a difference maker, yeah. and the New England Patriots would have six championships right that now. That is correct. But, and Unfortunately, guess what? that didn't happen, but it was in the making that Eric Rowe was going to be the guy. He was going to be named the starter. Okay. And he just happened to do that. And on guess the what? The Tennessee Titans said when they realized that Malcolm Butler was not only on his way out, he was out. As he they was should. free. They, they said, the let's give him five years and $61 million. Let's give him $30 million guaranteed. Right. The guy who didn't play a snap in the Super right. Bowl, a real snap. He played one special team snap. Mm-hmm. You, you just gave him $30 million guaranteed because you think he's really good. But I don't, I don't think anybody accused Malcolm of not being able to play football, right. not being a, a, a Pro Bowl caliber player. Something happened, which none of us know, that led up to his benching in the Super Bowl. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that from what I understand from players saying that Eric Rowe was going to be the starter. He was looking to replace him anyway because he was a – Bill Belichick thought he was a better player. Right. He was having a better season. And right now he's having one hell of a training camp. So this is the guy that they wanted to put in. And unfortunately, Malcolm got the short end of the stick on the Super Bowl, even though I think it was wrong. Skip saying, okay, that might be the case for 2018. Eric Rowe's going to be your starter. But why you couldn't wait to 2018? Why you got to start in the Super Bowl to make this happen? I say the same thing because <laughs> hey, I want to see I want to see six, and I think Malcolm could have helped at the time. Unless if he throw somebody at the Super Bowl. Skip, don't okay. say it. No, don't. I'm not going to do that. Okay. But I'm going to do this. <laughs> Unless Coach Belichick said, watch me polish my genius here on the Super Bowl stage because I'm going to take the player I stole from the Eagles because he, he acquired him from the Eagles, Eric Rowe, mm-hmm. and I'm going to sh- turn him right back loose on the Eagles and I'm going to show everybody just how great this Be trade the was. Be the Eagles with a formal Eagle. Yeah, because yeah. that would play really well. That'd be that's a good games, story. That's the kind of games you play in the preseason. Yeah, yeah. So I don't uh, think he uh, has no. that much of an ego to do what, that. What, what, what was shocking to me, considering that how Malcolm Butler got his start because Kyle Arrington was getting toasted in a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and he went to an undrafted guy and put him in the game. From West Alabama. Well, so you're looking at this the way the Super Bowl 52 is playing out, and you're looking at it, you're like, well, okay, my guy's getting toasted. I know who's going to start next year, and I know he might have had a great week of practice this week, but he can't do any worse than what they're doing right now. Malcolm, get in there. Just at halftime, right. you just say, <laughs> well, we got no that, that's we, we got to do it. Too, when, when you're talking about – the city, New England, the yep. fans, everyone is there. I don't care what happened. If he missed curfew, I heard all kind of rumors oh, yeah. that nothing is confirmed. You put that man Malcolm back in the says game. none to, of that occurred. Go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. But you put him in the game yeah. to win. So I don't agree with Coach Belichick by not playing him, but I don't know exactly what went on. Right. But I, I can say that he was higher on Eric Rowe than Malcolm Butler at the time. And he decided to make okay. his decision. You so, can't tell Coach Belichick what to do because he's right, going to do what he so wants to do. Onward and upward. So you lose Malcolm Butler <laughs> right. and you add on defense only these three players, Adrian Claiborne. And we saw him have one great game in his life, maybe. Yes. But it was against <laughs> right. my Dallas Cowboys. 
And if Chaz Green can be opposite him every game from now on, that's the backup tackle for the Cowboys. Cowboys. He might have six sacks a game for the Patriots. But I don't think Chaz Green starts for anybody because I don't. I hope he doesn't ever start again for the Dallas Cowboys. So what does Adrian Claiborne have left as a pass rusher? I don't know. Danny Shelton, what's he have? I don't know. Probably not a lot. And nope. then Devin McCourty's brother, Jason, is added. I think Jason's pretty good. So that could help. So that it, it adds to your point. The strength is going to be – Patrick Chung and Stephon Gilmore. It's the secondary, right? right? It's, go- it's going to be All the right. secondary. They have the most experience, and I think Coach Belichick is going to put the pressure on those guys. You know, he's going to have to line up some one-on-one situation for Stephon yeah. Gilmore. Look, we paid you all this money. We can't give you no help. Right. We're going to have to sit there and double up over here. We're going to have to, you know, stack the box. You guys are going to be out on your own. we got to stop this run. So I think Coach Belichick – because he is the pseudo defensive coordinator and head coach, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's going to be calling the shots, yeah. and he's going to put the pressure on the secondary because that's where his experience is. And I think they're going to be successful because even Coach Belichick knows, I have Tom Brady on offense. Right, I'm correct. going to be all right. right. So as long as we don't give up a lot of points, and if, if you drive the whole field on us and you kick a field goal, I did my job. He just right. needs, coach Belichick just needs to find that one guy in the draft the Chandler Jones mm-hmm. that he can he can count on consistently. He can call his defense. Okay, I agree, but he didn't find him this past draft. But it's hard to play for Coach Belichick because Coach Belichick wants you to play straight down the man. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And edge rushers, they want to play on the edge. They do. But when you play on the edge, you give up lanes, and Coach Belichick doesn't want to give up lanes. Right. right. Okay, so I look at this defense on paper. It looks average to me. Just average. Yes, right. Maybe a little above average because of the secondary players, but no, no, not any more than that. It is astounding to me that the odds makers still have the New England Patriots favored to win the Super Bowl. And it's mostly because of that quarterback. Yeah. It is. Because you've lost three good wide receivers. To, to me, you know, you lost Brandon Cooks, and then I don't know what happened to Jordan Matthews and Malcolm Mitchell, but, but they're gone. So all of a sudden, you're down to what? Tom Brady. Right, but that's saying something about the organization and the team as a whole and the, and the coach. It's not just Tom Brady because guess what? What receiver on the New England Patriots scares you? Thank Besides you. Rob Gronkowski. Gronk, that's it. Gronk, he's the only one that scares you. Julian Edelman, he's going to come back. He's going to trade mover. He, yeah, he's going he's he's, gonna he's gonna to move the chains. He's going to miss four games, but that's not the end of the world because Tom Brady missed four games and came back and won the Super Bowl. <laughs> it happens, you know what I mean? But that offense – they're going to do running back by committee. Mm-hmm. They got, you know, Hogan, Cordell Patterson. They're not anybody that's going to, you know, scare you. But Phillip if they play – Exactly. But if they play together and they got Tom Brady spreading the ball around like he does, he doesn't have to concentrate on one guy. He doesn't have a Randy Moss out there. Guess what? We had Randy Moss. Did they win the Super Bowl? No. Nope. But when they played a team ball by committee with the uh, David Pattons, the Troy Browns of the world, guess what? We won Super Bowls and championships, so that's who he is with De'Aaron Branch as well. That's who Tom Brady is, and that's what type of leader he is. So you always have opportunity when he's so behind the So if you when dropped in from Mars or someplace, and you, I said, look, you, you didn't know anything about pro football, and I said, here's the roster of this team, and you looked at all the rosters of the other team and all their accomplishments, mm-hmm. you'd say, wait, this, this team's terrible. It doesn't have anybody on defense to speak of, and then it's got a 41-year-old quarterback? <laughs> and you'd say, wait, no, th- this is – this is the best team in pro football? And then football? I go down here and look, I'm like, oh, huh. they got Coach Bill Belichick. Oh, Man, great oh. oh yeah, okay, yeah, they're going to be all right. They're really? Gonna be all right. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, they got one of the best mm. owners who stays out of the way, doesn't meddle. Really? And Coach Belichick, mm. defensive mind, mm. head coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, they cool. Oh, yeah, they're really? great. And the best yeah. quarterback that ever played the game, and I'm not saying arguably, I'm saying the best. It's, there's no argument to it. <laughs> right. We'll argue and he's still, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he is still the best today in the game today. Yeah. Still the best. No, that, just, that's what Vegas keeps telling you. The Vegas well, what else? How can you well, – why isn't Aaron Rodgers' team favored? It, because I can argue that their talent – Because they don't have Coach Belichick. But their talent across the board is better than New England's talent. Can we swap, can we swap, swap head coaches? No, but you could if you swap no, 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 quarterbacks, no, no. Then Green Bay would be the favorite to win it all. No, they would yeah, not. they would. No. You? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You, you see how I look no, at you? No, no. I don't, I don't know about that one. Huh? You give him those receivers? receivers? Give him Devontae? You make it seem like Aaron Rodgers, like chopped liver or something. Huh? I'm not saying he's chopped liver. He's just not in this guy's league. Huh? Huh? No, when it comes to history and you talk about putting up the stats and the Super Bowls and the championships and the runs over the last, you know, decade and a half, of course, it's not even close Tom Brady. But if you're going to put him in a foot race and who throws the ball the farthest, who throws the hardest, 
you're going to probably give the nod to Aaron Rodgers. Well, but we're you, talking about pageant. production on the if field. You're going to do a beauty pageant. Right, exactly. You, yeah, he wins the beauty pageant. Right. I just, well, we'll never know because Aaron Rodgers is never going to be coached by Coach Belichick. Mm. So we'll never know, Skip. Mike McCarthy's pretty good. For a while, people thought he was one of the best play callers there ever Nobody's was. ever thought he was too, oh, Coach Belichick. No. Okay. They have not. Okay. He's pretty good. He won. Uh, he did win a Super Bowl, right? Hmm? What was the last time he won that one? Well, Who was his quarterback? Ago. Oh, okay. Who was his quarterback? Forever ago. It was like <laughs> 10 years ago? I don't know. Ty, thank you <laughs> thank for you. joining thank you. us. No mercy. The Big Three Playoffs Ooh. gets underway Friday night on Fox. Loved watching that. We are joined by the man that started it all. Ice mm-hmm. Cube, thank you for Thanks coming for back and joining us on mm-hmm. Undisputed. So, what are you looking forward to with the playoffs? Oh, man, just, you know, uh, hard-nosed basketball. You know, we got um, power. Number one seed versus Tri-State, the number four seed. But Tri-State beat power earlier mm-hmm. this year, so that's going to be interesting. Then mm-hmm. you got Three-Headed Monsters versus Three's Company. Uh, that was a close game. It was 46 to 47, and then Jamario mm-hmm. Moon hit a four-pointer to win the game. Yep. So we expect exciting games this, this week in Dallas. So are you happy with this year that – to, to me, again, from a distance, it just feels like Big Three became a thing this year. It became an entity unto itself that it's on the map. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely yeah. happy. Um, you know, I think we've, we've uh, you know, taken a leap forward uh, as a league. Uh, you know, our players are better, more in shape. We got bigger names. Uh, being live on, on Fox and FS1 has been an incredible uh, leap forward for the league. And the reception from the audience. Uh, people thought we were gonna be a nostalgia league, but actually you have you know, kids dragging their fathers to the games. And, uh, <laughs> so you know, people realize three on three is a young sport because the youngsters play at school all day. So it's, it's just, uh, it's been you know, a, a great progression for the league. Mm. Are you hoping to get more and more stars as they step away from the NBA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, next year we want to try to expand to to 12 teams, hopefully play two nights a week, uh, three games a night. Uh, so we want to open up room for for more, you know, names to join, more players, guys that's ready to play. We had so many guys last year at the draft who, who didn't make a team but, but have the talent. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we want to just have enough room for all that talent. Mm-hmm. And again, how much does all this, you, you've done so much in your career, how much does this mean in the grand scheme of things to you? Oh, this is one of the, you know, highlights of my career. I mean, when I first got into music, you know, just that ride, NWA, going solo, and then getting into movies, you know. Big Three Friday? With, <laughs> Are you saying Big Three Friday? That's what you trying to tell with, me, with, with, John, with John Singleton getting into the movie game. Um, and, you know, having success there. But this right here is, you know, it's the, the trifecta, so to speak. It's, it's like a third act. And it's great to be involved in sports on this level, yep. you know, at the highest level. And, um, and to introduce something new and cool to the sports public. Well, we also want to talk to you about your Lakers. And really one of the big questions (laughs) heading into the season is the relationship between LeBron and, yes, the always outspoken LeVar Ball. (laughs) LeVar was on a radio station here in L.A. the other day, had an interesting take, and uh, we're going to listen to it now. That's not LeBron's team. They got a point. LeBron's team. LeVar. LeVar. You can say what you want, but we know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) I told you. What is it? Lonzo didn't go to Cleveland. Lonzo didn't go to Cleveland. LeBron came here to L.A. We already over here. What can LeBron learn from Lonzo? He can't learn nothing from Lonzo. And Lonzo can't learn nothing from him. What they got to do is win together. Mm, they right. both know how to win, so that's, that's the main thing. Ain't about no skills and how you going to finish a game. It's winning. I wish I had his energy every mm. single day. Okay, Q, are you worried about the friction between LeVar and LeBron? No, I love it. Really? I love it because everybody has to be their own player. You know, the, the, the worst thing the Lakers can do is just bow down to LeBron and what you want to do, Brian. What do you want to do? That's the last thing. Guys need to come in ready to play their game, realize they are professionals. Lakers on the front of their jersey, too, and they got to come in with their game. And they do have to mesh, win together. You know, I believe 
LeVar, I mean, Lonzo can learn a lot from LeBron, though. Yep. Uh, and, and vice versa, because you're never too old to learn, you're never too young to teach. So I'm pretty sure uh, LeBron can learn a few things from Lonzo, too, So because Lonzo's a great passer. So mm -hmm. uh, LeBron is, too, but they both are pretty cool in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Man, turn that mouth. Mm -hmm. Turn that turn mouth. Turn it off. I'm it just saying. Go ahead. See, that, it, man, you know waiting. what? This person here think he know everything. That's mm -hmm. the problem. I know a little bit about everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know everything. <laughs> go ahead, but, but, yeah. but so I, I think that's that's really what it is. Everybody got to come in. They got to be their own pro. They got to be their own man. You can't just bow down to what everything LeBron wants to do and play ball. Hmm. So to me, every once in a while, LeVar speaks some truth when he calms down and speaks in this tone right here. Mm -hmm. That was just bluster. That was just some trash talk. It's flying back and forth across the radio table. And I'm not going to read a lot into what he just said there. But I will remind everybody, he said a year ago, oh, LeBron's coming to Los Angeles. He's going to be a Laker. He just flat out said it. You can take it to the bank. He was, he was adamant about it. Was he not right? He was right. He was right. So I'm going to give him that. I just don't love the situation his son finds himself in because I still can't figure out the Rondo element. It's going to push, to your point, it's, it's going to push him to either sink or swim, man, because Rondo can play. Yeah, and, yeah. and Rondo fits with LeBron at this stage and age much better than Lonzo right. does immediately. If, if the goal is to win, if it's to build, which I don't think really LeBron's goal is just to build, but something's got to give here. Right. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. I think, I think uh, you know, L L Lonzo can do two things to keep Rondo, mm -hmm. you know, coming off the bench. Uh, that, I think he needs to hit that shot. Yep. You got to be able to hit that shot. Mm -hmm. He has to attack that rim. He does. You know, those are two things he can add to his game to keep him on the floor. Because mm -hmm. uh, to me... He's uh, he's pretty damn good at at a lot of things. He is, and those two things, if he gets better at, he he'll be to me a premier. And, and he's also six feet seven inches tall, and Rondo's about what six, six one? Three, yeah, six oh, two. No, I don't think six so. one, six two. Yeah. You know the thing. This is this is uncharted territory for LeBron, mm -hmm. playing with such young guys. LeBron, LeBron likes veteran guys. He ain't got, you know, because remember when he went back to Cleveland? No, nah, y'all need to get rid of Wiggins. Y'all need to get rid of all them young guys. Y'all need to give me veteran players. So now he's going to have a second-year Lonzo, a second-year Kuzma, third-year Ingram, mm -hmm. a lot of young guys. And this is really – so it's, this is really going to test his patience. You know, you say he has patience and he's willing to wait. We're about to find out just mm -hmm. how patient he can be. Okay, because but you, you got your vets if you want to play them. You got yeah, four but, of them. But no, no, no. But th those, those vets are not going to play heavy, heavy uh, minutes. I don't know. No, nah, no. Nah. You don't think Rondo? Rondo, Rondo might. I believe, I, I know Rondo said, he, you know, he don't have a problem backing up. But you know, Q, when you got that mindset, when you've been the lead singer of a band, you ain't really trying to go to another band and sing backup. You want to be the lead. I think he's there to put that pressure on Lonzo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Rondo is there to put the pressure on Lonzo to show him what, he, what it takes to, to be a, ch a champion. And um, so uh, I like it. I like the pressure. Sink or swim. Sink or swim. You believe he, what, he will rise to the occasion? I believe so. So do I. I believe so. I mean, he, it seems like he has a father who, who uh, demanding is the wrong word, but, but uh, very influential right. in his life. He exerts and, and he, pressure. He could take that pressure. If he could take that pressure all day, he could take what Rondo gets. Uh, all, all I know for sure is somebody's not going to be happy. Either Rondo's not going to be happy or LeVar is not going to be happy. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, Depending maybe. Minute. You never know. You know, um, I know the best man should play. And, and if you're not happy, get to practice and show the coaches why you should be in there. Well, well we already know. There's one job that's, available, that's already taken. It's Ashton Stone. Hmm. One job. Well, I hope so. You're taking credit for that. Everybody else fight for the God, I hope like you say, get the practice. Look here, if you, if, huh? if, hold, first of all, if he that dog like you said he is, and Cube said mm -hmm. he is, and his dad said he is, why are we even having this discussion? We getting the they, they went out and got Rondo. Well, for, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, who why led, did you do who that? Who led New Orleans playoff run past Portland? When you was in the NWA, NWA were y'all going out and signing new rappers to the group? <laughs> or you had what you had? You were good, right? Okay then. Okay then. Good enough. Okay then. Good. Good enough. I like mm -hmm. that. They go get Scarface the same I mean, with every, NWA. They actually had too many stars. Y'all ain't gonna get two partners <laughs> every, every, NWA. 
Every every uh, pencil needs to be sharpened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now that all of a sudden he's supposed to be the number two pick of the draft. He transcended. He's Magic Johnson reincarnated, and they go get this guy. Mm -hmm. Something ain't adding up. I mean, he never said that. That's the stuff be coming out your mouth. What? That is correct. All I'm saying is they went got the guy for something now. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, they got the guy to me to show their young player how to win that chip. Oh, really? That what they got, here, bro? I believe so. Mm. Do you think LeBron has any respect for Lonzo? I, I think he thinks he's a good player. I think he thinks Rondo's a better player. You think so? I do. Hmm. I think he have respect for any player when he go like this and that ball hit him in the hands. That's who he'll respect. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well uh, Rondo's led the league in assists three times. Mm. If he go like this and the ball hit him in the hands, Rondo been a champion. That's what he is mm. respect. I understand. Don't you that. want somebody that's been on the stage before and been in the studio? Yeah. Oh, okay. that, that, that man been nice. in the studio. Drop the hot track. Do you have any idea how hard to coach Rondo is? He yeah. is tough, man, because he thinks he is smarter than the coach, and probably he thinks he's smarter than LeBron James. And I promise you, if he plays high minutes, he and LeBron will clash. They will clash because he's clashed with everybody he's ever played with and for. Everybody. Down the line. Just look, look it up. What's he been with? Four teams and four? Five years? Sacramento, huh? Dallas. Dallas just say, no, nah, we're going to nope. pay you, but go home. Okay. <laughs> Boston, mm -hmm. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So, huh. what, is 15? Uh, I don't know. You know well, what? Maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's looking at it like, you know what? I hadn't found a really a, a steady home in a very long time, and the teams keep changing, and the common denominator mm -hmm. is me. <laughs> so maybe I need to reevaluate mm -hmm. how I'm doing things. You, okay, know, you, so you, get, you grow up, you get a little more mature, you understand the situation. He might feel great about going back to Boston and winning a championship in a Laker uniform. That mm, might be his thing. motivation. That might be his maybe. motivation. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what you keep overlooking about Lonzo Ball is not only is he gifted, but he's completely unselfish. He's a dream to play with, just a dream. He's not going to battle you. He's not going to clash. He doesn't need credit. Cute. Man, he's cool as a cucumber, man. He is. Here's I mean, the thing. I mean, it's with all this, these firestorms yeah. going on around him, he just goes out and plays. He's not right. caught up. Everybody talking about this. Uh, it. It's easy to be unselfish when you can't shoot. It's easy to be the backup singer when you can't sing. Mm -hmm. Teddy Pendergrass got tired of being that. I know, but but in a group, singing it's nothing is wrong with playing your role, brother. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's easy to be what when he was Harold Melvin in the blue, blue Notes. Well, once Harold Melvin found out he could sing and he wanted to step to the front, you you got to go. But what happened to Harold Melvin? In that's the what blue I'm saying. When they got rid of Teddy Pendergrass. Well, it was, see, it was cool. It was Harold Melvin, <laughs> Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes featuring Teddy. <laughs> but then when Teddy got first, he like, oh whoa, wait okay, a minute. Okay, but you, you just dis dismiss Lonzo Ball as a Blue Note, right? No, he, I, he he's a gift he passer. He's like once a generation. He could be Teddy. Yeah. Oh no, Teddy! Teddy just came. LeBron, Teddy. Hmm. Oh Lord. LeBron, did you recuse? Now you need to stop. Let's I get know. our references up to this. I know, yeah, I know, please. I know. Wait, well, they, they ain't no yeah. more. They ain't no more groups now. Everybody go solo from the jump. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody starting out. It's hard to cut up that money five ways. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Hugh is sticking around. We're going to talk to him about his take on the protests in the NFL, and that's coming up next. No mercy. Well, protests during the national anthem continued for NFL players during the first week of preseason. We saw players kneel, raise fists, and even stay in the locker room during the anthem. Ice Cube is still with us. Mm -hmm. And I want to start with you, Cube. Where are we now with the protests? I think we're in the same place we've always been. Um... People who, to me, who hijack the narrative, so to speak, and get so worried about kneeling and standing during the anthem, they're just missing the point. The point, and, they, and they're missing the point on purpose to me because they, they want the distraction. They want us to talk about kneeling and anthem and this. Military And not talk about police brutality and why someone protests. You know, if I go and protest in front of the White House, I'm not dissing the White House. You know what I mean? I'm protesting at a place that I think I'm gonna be heard or seen. And this country needs a lesson on freedom. What freedom really means, because I'm free to do what the hell I wanna do during the anthem. 
And that's really what it's all about. And that's what it should be about. What I do during the anthem shouldn't offend you, shouldn't offend you, shouldn't offend you, because it's my freedom. And so we're losing sight of that on purpose because we don't want to deal with, with the, the real police. issue. And that's police brutality is out of control in this country and has been forever oh, yeah. and a long time. So that's the real problem that we really need to get back to. The, the very country that was founded on protest. They got tired of being under British rule. Yep. They got tired of having a king and queen. They wanted religious freedom. They wanted equal representation. They say tax without representation is unacceptable. Taxation That's why they dumped all that tea in the harbor in Boston. A whole bunch of it. Ta and, and it worked. And, and, it, and it worked, Skip. Mm -hmm. the, thing, the thing is about... The thing is about protest. Mm -hmm. It should be... And that was a violent protest. Yes! <laughs> Not a, a peaceful, peaceful. Uh, individual protest that doesn't hurt anyone. You know, if somebody's not going to watch a football game because a player is kneeling or standing, then when they the have game a, is actually not going on. They they have a it, it, they have a problem within themselves. They have a problem within themselves that somebody else has the freedom to do what they want to do, and that's what this sh country should be about: the freedom to do what you want to do, as long as you're not breaking one of these laws. So, <clears throat> along those same lines, you recently supported Dak Prescott's right to stand if he chooses for the national anthem. What kind of reaction did you get to your statement? None. And I don't care about a reaction because <laughs> it's my opinion. Right. And so this was his stand before. It was 2016, 2017. So yep. why can't a man uh, believe in what he believes in and do what he wants to do and without us coming down his back or throat or neck? Uh, he may have crossed the line a little bit by saying what other people should do. Yep. But for the most part, this is the stand the man took before all of this. So why should he switch reels now? Because uh, the whole herd is going to another way. You know, stick with your convictions. Don't let nobody turn you around. I, I, I totally agree. And that was the, my problem was not that he says, I want to stand. This is what I've always done. This is what I believe in. When he got to the point, this is not the time or the venue, Rosa Parks said, well, uh, Rosa said, I'm sorry I'm tired on a Monday, and the venue happens to be a bus, but I'm not giving up my seat. Yeah. And it's a distraction. You see, they always tell us, they tell blacks, I wish you'd find another way to protest. But when them people watch, march down the street of Charlottesville, they never tell them, I wish you'd find another way to try to get your point across to say you want your race to be well represented. Mm -hmm. They don't tell them that. Yeah. But they tell we peaceful. No lights, no bashing stuff, no shouting, you, you will not replace us. No shouting, no epitaphs, none of that. Peaceful. But find another way. What other way is there? If you would hear me, I wouldn't protest to begin with. But since you don't hear me, I need to get your attention. And when I protest and I, you know, uh, Dr. King says riots is the voice of the, the, uh, the people that can't be heard. Well, I don't want to have to break stuff. I, don't, I just want to peacefully protest. Mm -hmm. I just want to kneel, and I want to get your attention to say the injustice that we see going on in America, mm -hmm. the police brutality that's getting out of control in America, mm -hmm. and what we're seeing, we've seen a rise. And I said this from the very first time. I said, I don't know what President Trump is going to do for the economy, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you what he will do. He will give a lot of people yep. voices to become emboldened to say and do whatever they want. People feel people now are say that N word like it ain't nothing. But you got to understand now, <clears throat> you might catch the right person at the wrong time on the wrong day. President Trump got bodyguards. You out there shouting the words. You ain't got no bodyguard. Somebody tear you up. So be careful how you talking to people in these streets. Thank you for but, saying that. But this is this is so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They know it's not about the military. And the first thing they say, they disrespecting the flag. Come on. Even after the man told you mm -hmm. it's not about the flag. You still gonna make it about the flag? You still? So I tell you what, since we love the vets so much, because we throw that up there, don't step over another one. There shouldn't be a vet homeless on the street. He should be able to walk up to any VA hospital or any hospital in America and move to the front of the line. Because we love the vets. Oh, we love the vets when it comes to talking about this issue. <laughs> but we don't really love the vets because every time I pass them, they got a flag, I give them money, Skip. 
and I see so many people step over. I see why they dying at an alarming rate. Why they got a, a five, six, eight week wait list to get treatment. We love them so much. Oh, we love them when you start talking about your issue, Q. But now once we start talking about that, y'all go back there. We will step over y'all again and go do mm -hmm. what we do. So to both your points, in the late 1700s in this country, the protest rose and escalated to the level of war, war. Yeah, exactly. to defend our right to worship the way we want to worship and to have taxation with representation. Correct. Okay, so I get that. Now let's go back, small picture to Dak Prescott. To your point, he said in 2016, this is just who I am, I stand for the anthem. He said in 2017, I just stand for the anthem. Right. But he always consistently said, I believe in this cause of police brutality, the way unarmed black men have been treated by white cops. Right. And he spoke at length several times about it. But unfortunately, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time because Jerry Jones had issued his edict. We will stand as a team and we will tow that line. I thought that was an unfortunate choice of words, right. tow that line. And then, of course, our president tweets, boy, Jerry. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Dak is asked after a camp workout, well, how do you feel now? The same way I always felt. <laughs> yeah. I stand for the anthem. Right. Well, it looked like he just sold out to Jerry and to our president. And right. it's a bad look. I get it. And you, you it really it raised your hackles, if, man. If, it got you. If he, if what he said in 2016 and 2017, he should have said in 2018, I just refer you back to my statements that I made in 2016, yeah. 2017. But then he started it almost like he was echoing what President Trump said, what Jerry Jones said. And now people looking at him like, hmm? You know how they're looking at it. I mean, sometimes, you know, I look at the situation. To me, uh, you heard what I said in 2016. You heard what I had said in 2017. Why are you still asking me the same question in 2018? Because ain't nothing changed right. with the date. So uh, sometimes when you answer a question that somebody else bring to you, it looks like you're bringing it up. Right. And you're not. Right. It's, it's actually rehashing something that's old. So wrong place, wrong time for Dak. Uh, but, you know, having an opinion don't make you a bad guy. Right. And, and no he question. has his opinion, and that's fine. And, you know, during the anthem, I, you know, we, we got all these things, uh, Siri and Alexa. I wonder if any of these things are recording what people are doing in their houses during the anthem when they're <laughs> and watching they're cooking, the game. they're going to the bathroom, they're doing everything but they standing doing at everything attention. but standing at attention. And Jerry so, Jones was so, standing at attention with his hat, hat on. on. The day. So the thing is this: uh, let's stop playing. Let's stop yep. playing. Let's deal with the real Fair issue: enough. police brutality in this country. Right. Okay. Now let's take it back to the basketball court. One other issue we got to get your take on. Will Carmelo Anthony fit as a Houston Rocket? <laughs> no. Ooh, we got a <laughs> flat out no. That didn't take nope. long. I think uh, D'Antoni is going to... Quit? No, of course <laughs> not. No, I think he's going to use this as his uh, chance uh -huh. to so-called put Carmelo in his place. Wow. And okay, show him. to get even with him, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I oh. really do. I think he's well, gonna that's interesting, yeah. practice the hell out of him and not let him play. Ooh. And I think that's gonna be Ooh. very irritating. You think you think Melo gonna come off the bench? Ooh. Yeah, he, he's gonna come off the bench. Oh, so you know, you know how Melo's thinking. Melo's like, hold on. Jerry <laughs> Green and DJ Tucker? Melo. It ain't Melo show right now. Oh, it, oh, he it's ain't not Melo. Melo show he no Carmelo. It's Carmelo now. I mean, it's Dan Tony's show right now. But Melo said, y'all brought me here. Y'all brought me to sit on the bench? Yeah. Oh, no, nah, They man. brought you here. Melo go, Melo, <laughs> Melo go act you. up. Melo go start bucking. Hey, you know. <laughs> and, and how will Chris Paul, what, what will his role be in this? Will he side with the coach or with his very close friend, Carmelo? I have no idea. I can't yeah. speak yeah. to that. I just, I feel like, you know, uh, Coaches and, and, you know, players and people, they, they don't forget. And they do hold grudges. And he wants to win, of course. But I, I think that he's using this opportunity to show Carmelo. Hmm. Well, that's going to make for an unhappy basketball team. Yeah. That, that's going to make for issues. Well, well good. I hope, it's like, I hope it's on full display, game two, when they play the Lakers. Mm hmm LeBron dropped that 35-point triple dub on him. Yep. Because I'm going to be right there. Mm. Me too. Right there. Mm.
But you'll be in the tenth row, and you'll be in. The oh first no! Row oh no! Oh no! no. I might have me some gym shoes. They might put yeah. me in the game. I'm really? gonna be so close. I think I'm gonna be in my box. I just, oh, and oh, we, got we, gonna be, we gonna be in the box. Oh, we. Gonna be yeah. in the box. Hey, I'm gonna tell you what I need. <laughs> now I'm your best friend. Yeah. I, 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 I need to have some when it comes real to a box, you need to have some real. Book. All right, <laughs> Cube prediction for your Lakers or LeBron's Lakers. How do they finish next year? They are in what seed in the playoffs? Um, fifth, sixth. Fifth or sixth? Mm-hmm. That's realistic. I got them you third got or fourth. Third or fourth, but you're mostly third with 55 wins. 54 wins. Yeah. Well, well how about this? Or what about in the AFC West? Where were your Raiders finish? Uh, first. Raiders you better stop subject. it. Who gonna be? Who the stop? Y'all oh, best player not even no, there. Only competition is Kansas City. Y'all San Diego gonna bust y'all up. Man, ain't no San Diego. I mean, you the, want the, them back? L.A. L.A. <laughs> LA. Going LA gonna bust y'all. Yo. Y'all can't even get uh, Khalil to come to camp. The man said, I'd rather not be here and turn down 814000 Don't worry about it. We want him mad. We want him in camp yeah. mad. He ain't coming. He's coming. coming. No, he's coming, coming no. mad. No, he's, he's not coming. You know who's going to take it out? Yo, quarterback. No. Mm-hmm. John Gruden hadn't even called him. Now, you remember, QB, you, you weren't here, but uh, somebody got upset because LeBron James didn't call Luke Walton and let him know he was coming. John Gruden been on the job for like eight months. Hadn't even talked to Khalil Mack one time. Hmm. That ain't none of my business, though, Q. Yeah, that don't mean Khalil Mack ain't going to come and play. He ain't coming. Mm-hmm. He coming. That man turned out 8-14. That's what he getting fined for. They'll this. give it back to him when they uh, mm-hmm. sign that new contract. No, he said, I want $80 million. Mm-hmm. Give me that, and I'll be there. If tomorrow. Khalil Mack wants to be part of something special, he will come back. Well, he ought to go to Denver. Yeah. Nah, he ought to go to Denver. He want to be part what? of something special. Mm-hmm. Von Miller and Khalil is man. over. It's over. Thought you didn't like Case Keenum. Hmm? I mean, I can learn. <laughs> I can learn. <laughs> you can learn. Why, you Thank you for joining us. Good Way luck this week with the Big Good Three luck. and the playoffs <laughs> Friday night on nice. Fox. No mercy. From the new movie, Black Klansman, John David Washington, Hello. here with us. Welcome to Undisputed. Oh, Welcome. thank you. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank, thank you for Thanks joining for us. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. I want to get started with asking you about Spike Lee because the film was directed by him. And I'm just curious about your first conversation when he brought up this project yeah. and how he got you on board. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in uh, Cincinnati on location. I'm doing another film. And I get a text from him saying, yo, this Spike, call me. <laughs> now, I've never heard from Spike via cell phone oh. <laughs> or any other devices for that matter. So um, I, I thought it was worth investigating, even if it was a prank. I, mean, I just, I got to try. So I called him. I'm like, hello? <laughs> and uh, he's like, yo, this Spike. I was like, what up, Spike? So he's like whispering now. Like, I, got, I got a story. First black detective, Colorado Springs, KKK. Infiltrates. Now I'm thinking like, this is like the Dave Chappelle skit. <laughs> like, like, I think I've heard this before. It's like, it's a true story. He kept saying, it's a true story. I'm going to send you a book. Where are you staying again? Cincinnati. I bet. He sends me the book. I read it. I go berserk. I can't believe this is real. This happened. I call him back like, this is incredible, Spike. You know, I, I still don't know what he wants with me, but like, I, I think you should, it feels like you should do this. He was like, so you, you want to do it? I was like, yeah. He's like, bet. See you this summer. Wow. That was it. <laughs> I see it gives me the chills. <laughs> me and this guy go back a long way. Hey, <laughs> back hey, in Atlanta. Yeah. We used to train. I had just retired, and he was at uh, Morehouse. Yeah. And uh, the guy that trained me for the better part of my career, Rope Man, oh, was man. his trainer. And we used to go to the track and do the workouts that I did a lot in the summer. Right. And I wasn't going to tell anybody because I didn't really, you know, really need to share this. But you could tell her what happened on that track, though. Oh, uh, that you, you were a great teacher, you know. He taught me how to stretch, oh. you know, and just be confident in myself. Is that what you want me to tell him? Nah, no, you go, you go, you go. You go <laughs> that you want me no, to don't say? tell, don't, don't tell Skip, don't tell Skip, don't tell Skip the rest of it. Okay. Was there a race involved? I don't, I don't, I don't recall. There, no, I don't recall. We, there was no straight up racing, but we ran in a group. And let's just say that, you know, who was in the front of the group huh. and who was like, Couple of, like, uh, you're saying the guy in the front of the group was the one who won, ran the 4840 for the Dallas Cowboys? When he well, we had to run a lot of sprints. We had to run like 300s and 200s oh and 150s and 100s. You know, it was back it, in good old times. It's, you know? it's just about example. He was just giving us great advice. Yeah, yeah. You I, know, didn't, he, I didn't want to leave. communication. I didn't want to leave him too far behind. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of your football dream, you did hang on to yours for quite a while because you went undrafted out of Morehouse. You, you hold more, all the records at Morehouse as a running back. Thank you. But you went undrafted, then you wind up on the practice squad of the St. Louis Rams yep. at that point. Yep. You go to the Ryan Fire and yeah. NFL Europe, and then you wind up in Sacramento playing for the Mountain Lions, and you stay for four years. Mm-hmm. So Jimmy you were. Green. 
you were clinging to your dream, right? I, it was it was a, it was my source of independence. You know, I had a, this like kind of rebellious quest of independence. Mm -hmm. So I used that kind of anxiety, anxiousness, um, and really resentment due to people thinking that this is like some sort of inheritance or you know this nepotism or whatever. Right. Football didn't serve that. They didn't care who my no, father was. No, I did not. So I would endure the broken ribs, the That's concussions, and the, wow. the tears. Do just so I can show people, prove people that I'm my own man. So yeah, I uh, played for the great Denny Green, mm -hmm. and yeah, I did hold on. I held on strong because I wanted to keep proving myself. Now that's mm -hmm. a bad fuel. There's no longevity in that kind of motivation, as I realize now. But uh, it was worth it then. And I, when I got a real opportunity, my first start in the UFL, when I got a real opportunity, I, I rushed for a buck twenty-five and a touchdown. Got player of the week that week. Mm -hmm. So uh, God told me that yeah, you, you can do this. You're good enough. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Got to pull you out now. <laughs> so what? Wh how did you get pulled out? Because the league finally folded in October right. of your fourth year, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like three right. games in. I mean, we were right. making substitute teacher salary. But so we were trying to. We were. It, you were there for the craft. You were there to get that opportunity. Yeah. I think Sendejo still playing. Mm -hmm. He was a teammate of mine. He was safety mm -hmm. for the Vikings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's some, a lot of guys with great stories. And so I got pulled out though. I was training. You know, trying to hang on. I knew really I, I didn't have a shot. I'm 29 years old at running back. That's not sexy. You know what I mean? With really no film. You know, I mean? <laughs> right. you know how it goes. Yeah. So uh, besides practice squad film, which the Rams won't give me. I, I would like to say, can I get that practice squad film? Really? I would love well, you, to you see did, that. You did some You do it. You <laughs> oh, do it oh, work on, on Wednesdays. You do it what? You put work in. Boy, and then they, they, they blow the whistle. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I was training and I and I and I heard this, and my Achilles. Gone. Oh, wow. I saw this little worm in my calf. I was like, wow. again, you know, I was hoping that it's just a strain. I could still work out, and it was over. Um, that was great, though, because that segued me into football, uh, into acting. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, who's now my agent, uh, told me about this Ballers uh, audition. Mm -hmm. Football players, you can do this. And I told him while I was on pain pills and everything, medication, um, I like to train, study first, and then get into it. He's like, no, no, learn how to fail in this. Um, and you can train at the same time. You're not gonna get the job, so just learn what it's like to audition and mm. fail. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do that because I've been mm. getting turned down in auditions. <laughs> and so I, I, I know what it feels like. Oh. So, uh, and I ended up getting the job 10 auditions later. So, mm. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, cool. one question about your father. We all know who your father he is. He loves you guys. Since thank you bring it up, he, he made, made sure I told you guys. Thank that. you With very him, much. Him, he thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. The character he plays in The Equalizer, Robert McCall. Robert McCall, yeah. yeah. yeah is seen, especially in the second Equalizer, as a father figure and a mentor. Right. How much of that guy, that character, was the real guy <laughs> when you were the oldest son growing up? Oh, man. He, he, you know, love has many different languages. Many different languages. So he, he was um, a great motivator in a lot of ways. And uh, he led by example. I, I say this all the time. My mom taught me how to love. He taught me how to hunt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and so that I appreciate for the rest of my life. You know, so, yeah, I mean, there's some moments in that film that uh, I get flashbacks on, sure, in my yeah. own life, but uh, I'm thankful for it. Define hunt. Yeah, like what I'm doing now. Yeah. What I, why I was, you know, playing through all those injuries, mm -hmm. why I didn't, why I got my own scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, why I was able to make my own money and, you know, practice squad money, but still my own. That's what I mean by hunt. You know, getting a role like this where he had nothing to do with. He didn't have any. You know, like, yep. that's what yep. I mean by hunting. Good. You really would have preferred to have been a professional athlete and not go down this path. That way you would have never had to worry about someone saying Denzel's son in this genre. Well, I, I got to tell you, honestly, man, Shannon, I wanted to do this my whole life. I actually... I oh, really, you wanted to be in it? I wanted to be okay. in it my whole life. I saw my father do Shakespeare in the park when I was four years old in New mm. York. Wow. You know, I was the winter of our discontent. He used, to, he used to say the lines while walking, you know. I keep a, a, a Shakespeare monologue on me at all times. I just, huh. I loved it. And my mom, classically trained pianist, went to Juilliard. I know they're, they're artists, but it's about the process. They're always about the craft. And his ascension into the, in, into the industry, in the industry, we were getting treated differently in the right. fame and all that stuff. And that's when I started coming, being more reserved and like filtering that through football. But I wanted to do this my whole life. Honestly. The, the thing is, Skip, that I that I like love about John David is that the whole while, if you didn't know, you would have never known who his father was. I wouldn't because, know now because not one time did he ever mention. Not mm. one time did he like, oh man, I'm good. If I don't get, you know, <laughs> Pop's got this. He was on time. Mm. Uh, he showed up. He trained hard. He did everything that we asked him to do. And I'm like, <clears throat> and I'm like, he can go places yep. now. Those are some serious sessions, too, with Rope Man. <laughs> hey, serious, man. Well, you know Those how it is. Those workouts. 100, that, let's go, right? Yeah, that's it. Mm, hey, man. run the rack. Right, right man. <laughs> Shoot. But, I, but I, to see you, to, 
It's funny because I don't know if I've ever seen someone that, I, that I've known before he did that. Mm -hmm. Now, Skip, you, we've had a lot of guys come on here and we see him in movies, but he's the first guy that I've actually known before he became this. Mm -hmm. So to see him and, <laughs> and to be happy and to be proud, like, man, I, I know, dude. Yeah, I like, right. man, Back I in the day, man. I, yeah, deal. <laughs> do it on T.O. camera for real, for real. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a great feeling. Thank you. The only way I think of Denzel is every once in a while in that voice, I hear a little bit oh, of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of... <laughs> I didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. I never knew. I oh never noticed it when he was growing. When I saw him yeah. 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. But as I listen to him in the movie, yeah. and I look at his mannerisms now, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not trying to deny it or hide it. This is who I am. I'm not trying to. I mean, be like him, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm, I'm my own yeah. person, though. Let's talk sports. Yes, sir. You grew up in Los Angeles. I assume you're a Laker fan. Mm -hmm. Look at the color he got on. <laughs> Correct assumption, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Showtime Lakers, baby. How far will LeBron's Lakers go this year? Uh, I mean, I think we're playoff bound yeah. automatically. You know, I think uh, with the right pieces, everybody's young and capable. I I've seen them do more with less, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, no problem. Yeah. Were you very excited when you heard the news? Uh, yeah, I was almost in disbelief. I couldn't believe it. I didn't think it was real. But yeah, when it happened, of course, I was excited. You know, mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. And, and what just to br just bring that culture back, that winning culture. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you surprised how much criticism and blowback LeBron receives? I mean, he's he's I mean, history, like one of the just greatest athletes off the court, like what he's doing, right. you know, and, and how he's exemplifying being in, a leading man, if you will, in, this, mm -hmm. in that industry. I sh I, I, he should get more credit than that. Um, yeah, I, listen, people are going to talk what they go, believe what they're going to believe, but he's doing the work. He's putting it down. So. Mm. so did you grow up a Kobe fan, I'm guessing? I grew up Lakers fan. Mm -hmm. Of course, I love Kobe. I love Shaq. I wish we could have got, gotten more out of that, but we got a lot out of it. But like m me personally, I, I was Showtime Lakers. Okay. That, that was that rival. Also because of the bird. In the, in the Celtics, like that, yeah. that rivalry was just amazing to me. I mean, so, they used to be in there fighting. That was so cool. <laughs> would you say you're more Magic than Kobe? I, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of blowback That's from this. Right. But yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yes. Good. I am. I mean, he changed the game, man. Like, the actual no-look pass, you know, sometimes they look, then that, it was a real no-look pass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. <laughs> Can you see how some... Hardcore Laker fans are going to hang on to Kobe versus LeBron. They, yes, they should. Mm -hmm. You know, the Kobe. You got a, we got a lot of great memories attached to Kobe mm -hmm. in, in, in that time. And I mean, that was a twenty-point deficit in the fourth quarter with the Blazers. Was it fifteen or twenty? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember exactly where I was when that happened. I mean, but that's Kobe in Shaq's legacy. Mm -hmm. And then Kobe did it with Powell, you know, as well. But again, Magic, Worthy, Scott, Green, mm -hmm. the great Kareem, like those. I mean, I, to me, what they did for the game. You know what I mean? That, that's they do I mean. know LeBron is coming, not to try to erase Kobe's legacy. Right. I hope. Well, I hope so. But people ever get personal about like their bands or their favorite rapper? Like right. the, it's theirs. You yeah. know? Like you're right. You're right. Mm. <laughs> but you know, so if you want to, you know, if you ever want to go how back, you feel about LeBron. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. But <laughs> but I will be willing to give you a rematch. So anytime you want to come out to one of these local high schools and we want to do a couple two hundreds. To, we want to talk 200? What do you mean? Like run 200? Run! Uh, no, I think so I don't somebody wanna... might be talking to him. <laughs> yeah. well, I get it. Yeah. I'm waiting I get to it. ask you, you all day for that. Yeah, I get it. Oh, I, get it. I mean, if, if you would like to, sir, we can do that. Do, do you realize he just turned 50 years of age? Congratulations, mm -hmm. man. Hey, he, I, don't, I don't look like it, dude. You look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. yeah, he yeah. don't. He know. The moisturizer is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's going great for Shannon. Good to see you, dog. Good to see you, too, sir. John David, thank you for joining <laughs> us. It was a pleasure. And make sure to check out Black Klansman in theaters now. We'll be Right back. No mercy. Terrell Owens' absence from Canton for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony was criticized by a lot of people, including many of his fellow Hall of Famers. Michael Irvin went on the Rich Eisen show a day before the ceremony and said some of the Hall of Famers took T.O. not being there personally. Irvin also said T.O. owes it to the people to be there, but the Hall of Famers would hug him if he ever shows up to Canton. T.O. responded yesterday, tweeting, quote, Rich, he sounds ridiculous, and I don't owe anybody anything. Must be the side slash after effects of drug use. I'm going to leave it at that. Definitely won't be any hugging going on. Hashtag Go Mox, which is T.O.'s alma mater. We're joined by Rob Parker, and Rob, I'm going to start with you. Was this tweet from T.O., Inbounds or out of bounds? It's inbounds from this standpoint. This is who T.O. is. And 
when you rub him the wrong way, <laughs> he's going to come back at you. This is just how he's wired. And, and I don't think what Michael Irvin said was the worst thing in the world. I don't. No. I, I really don't. But I think T.O. felt like his character was being assassinated. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when you tell somebody you want to debate them whether they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame what, on their play. Then you could accept that, okay? Right. But once people opened up so many things about him, I think he just, his natural reaction is, I'm going to fight back for who I am, right. my name. These people don't really know who I am. And I think that's always been the issue with T.O., what people thought from the outside mm -hmm. and what he has on the inside. I don't know him that well. I never got to cover him. I told you he came to my class to speak. Mm -hmm for an hour to the kids, and I thought he was very honest and open, and I got a, a, a glimpse of what I feel was the real guy. Right. Which is a very sensitive guy when it comes to people talking about him. Right. And the Michael Irvin stuff, I know people say, why do you gotta go there or whatever? It's public knowledge, he went through some issues, he cleaned his life up, but it's out there. Just like some of the other players that have gotten in the Hall of Fame, Lawrence Taylor, mm -hmm and whatnot, and people didn't seem, that didn't seem to bother them when it came for Lawrence Taylor and other players who had off the field issues to get in. It didn't seem to bother the writers at all. I, I don't remember anybody saying, well, how can you do this if Lawrence Taylor was doing that? There was a certain quarterback from Green Bay that got in, but we're not gonna make, make right. it in. We but but, but it. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those things I didn't do. seem to bother people, but for whatever reason, him being a quote unquote diva and wanting the football and maybe and I'm gonna not gonna say that he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Some of the stuff that he would say, you wouldn't say about a teammate in public. It, it might be the real and right answer. Right. Who would you rather have, Brett Favre or Donovan McNabb? But I don't think you should say that. Especially when you play with a guy. When you're playing <laughs> with a guy. So did he make mistakes along the way? Yes, he did. Were they that terrible that people should keep out? a guy who put together unbelievable numbers and played in the Super Bowl injured and, and had a tremendous game. The guy, I never doubted, A, whether he worked hard, B, whether he wanted to win or not, and C, that when he was out on the field, he gave his all. And I think that's what hurts him the most. You want to go? No, go ahead. Um, for me, I thought it was out of bounds, Robin. As I explained to Skip earlier, is that when you go to the Hall of Fame luncheon, the Ray Nitsky luncheon on Friday, Deacon Jones or the great Deacon Jones, rest his soul, he would always stand up and he would tell us what he expected and what the hall expected. And he says, now that you're in here with these room, in this room, he says, nobody is better than anyone else. He says, everybody that's in this room could catch everybody else in this room and could tackle everybody else in this room. So we don't, now we don't take shots at each other. We're on the same team. I thought it was out of bounds for the simple fact this is a teammate. We don't take shots at teammates. We don't take shots at family. We keep this in-house. Whatever T.O.'s feeling towards Michael, you can take it. Hey, take it to Michael. Michael, you've already voiced it. Hey, T.O. felt that he was having textual conversations with Michael Irvin. Michael was on the NFL Network. Michael showed those conversations to the, uh, to the, uh, to, to the TV watching land. And T.O. felt that Michael broke his trust. T.O. is very How would you feel if you were oh, I'd, I'd be, Yeah, I'd have been very upset. Yeah. Although, because, quick point of order, I'm pretty sure the text he showed on TV yeah. was Terrell just stating his position exactly word for word as to why he didn't go to... to I, 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 think, I think it's more had to do with trust. Had he got, yeah. had he got T.O.'s approval, yeah. T.O., you mind if I share this with the audience? But, but it wasn't a negative text no, no, no. or, a, you know... Right, but yeah. if okay. I text you, Skip, or you text me... I don't think you'd be happy if it was on, if I put it on social media. Uh, I think you would be the one who would not be happy. <laughs> <if I did. laughs> and, and, and that's the, but you know, Skip, the thing is with T.O. No, I remember that, yeah, Skip. Okay. I remember that. He be take, careful. And I won't. <laughs> T.O. don't. T.O. takes everything personal. We know yeah. that. And that's what happened. He took what Michael said, even though this wasn't the harshest critique, this wasn't the harshest criticism. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. He took it personal because Michael had betrayed his trust. And so moving forward, anything that comes out of Michael's mouth and it references T.O., he's going to look at it as a negative. And trigger and he's shoot back. Just, tr and just he's trigger. Shoot back. So I'm going to remind everyone that the voting bylaws of the Pro Football Hall of Fame state 
that off the field behavior or misbehavior will not be factored into whether you're voted into the hall or not. Correct. Right. To your original yes. point about Lawrence Taylor, or Brett Favre, whoever we're mm-hmm. talking about. It took Michael Irvin three times to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Why was that, Mr. Sharp? Oh, I believe it's strictly pro- off the field. I covered Michael Irvin. Dallas teams that should have won four straight Super Bowls if the coach had stayed, maybe five or six for all I know. <laughs> they were that good, that loaded. And I covered Terrell Owens in San Francisco, and I know a lot of players who played with him and talked to many of them in Philadelphia and Dallas. And the irony of this conversation is Michael Irvin was the complete flip side of Terrell Owens. Michael Irvin, to me, was one of the great leaders in the history of sports. I'm not saying he's quite Shannon or Ray Lewis, but he was up there because that was a dynasty that he drove. He was the leader of those Dallas Cowboys. It wasn't Troy Aikman. It wasn't Big name, big personality. It wasn't Charles Haley. It wasn't Darren Woodson. It wasn't Deion Sanders. It was Michael Irvin. He set the tone for that team on the practice field, in the weight room, on the sideline, in the huddle. And certainly on third and nine in Philadelphia or the Gi- at the Giants or at Washington, he was the one who ignited them. He was the rocket fuel of that whole football team because he played hard and then he partied hard. And I do not defend the partying because he had all kinds of issues off the field. So what Terrell s- tweets about is fact. Those it's are all undeniable. Right. And it went beyond drug use. It went to womanizing and nightlifing and partying and it, all of the above. And it's why he got held out of the Hall, Pro Football Hall of Fame for three times. Did Michael have a chip on his shoulder about it when it was time to go in? Did he accept it and embrace it? Oh, he yeah. loves the Hall of Fame as much as anybody. Who's oh, absolutely. It, right? Yes. He's become like the ultimate ambassador for the Hall yes. of Fame. Yes. He, he is the life of that party mm-hmm. when you go up there every the early August. But, prob- right? but probably because he probably thought he wasn't going to get in. You remember he cried like a baby well, when he got in. A lot of guys cry no, like but a baby. No, but I think that there was, after the three yeah. years, well, t- that he questioned whether or not he was going to make it. So when yeah. he made it, he fully embraced it. Yeah. I just so, think so T.O.'s t- different. You brought up LT. To me, Michael Irvin was the Lawrence Taylor of wide receivers or of his generation because, you know, all that drug use, all that off the field, it did not affect for one second his ability to perform and lead on the field because Lawrence Taylor was the unquestioned leader. I covered that Giants guys. team. I was I, he not the guy? No he doubt was, about it. He, he was a game changer. Whew. He was a tr- transcendent player. Yeah, he's, he, he, who gave the speech to the sideline huddle before they went out on the field? We're going to go after him. What was he oh, yelled like a wild, dog. wild pack of dogs? A bunch dogs. of crazy dogs. Right. Okay? No, I'm, it's Lawrence Taylor. And, and again, boy, you can't defend his issues off the field because they're there. But did they factor in on the field? They did not. Yeah, but it, you, when you come to guys like LT, what he did on the field is so tra- – Skip, people don't know this, but he was defensive rookie of the year and defensive player of the year <laughs> the same year. Nah, I'm, this is so just imagine the guy yeah. – uh, Raekwon Smith coming into the NFL, the linebacker Roquan, for the Bears, yep. Roquan Smith, yep, yep. and he went defensive player of the year and defensive rookie of the year. We're not going to that's, un- exactly, that's unheard of. No. I, I watched him up close. He was the MVP. He, he was unbelievable. He was he, the most dominant defender we've ever seen. Ever. Ever. He made, There's no doubt about he it. He made the left tackle famous. And he made the rush. He made the edge rusher famous. All these Von Miller and Khalil Mack, Derek Thomas is because of LT, mm-hmm. and all these uh, uh, Jason Peterson, Tyron Smith is because of LT. I, mm-hmm. I agree. I get all that, but but I just think there's guys who are wired differently. Yeah, and I just think To is wired he, differently. He, he is, yeah. and that's Look, why I think people I, I, I can, can always connect with. I say it every time. The talent was undeniable. The production was undeniable. Yes. It's it's off the charts. Yes. it's right up there with Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. But he was the opposite of a leader. He was a solo act. He was more of a self-promoter. He was not addicted to drugs or alcohol off the field because he doesn't do any of that. He had no issues off the field at all. But he was addicted to the spotlight, to a fault. And the Terrell that I knew in San Francisco was as divisive a player as I ever covered in any sport because half the locker room would love him Mm -hmm. and half would despise him and come to me as a columnist in the Bay Area and say, how can you defend him? Because for a while I did. I was his lone defender for about almost two, a year and a half for sure. And then so many players came up and said, what are you doing? I, I don't know. Maybe I should think this. Sometimes, but sometimes I just wish I had been in San Francisco because I believe I, I would have handled T.O. differently uh, than probably Jerry handled 
T.O. Okay. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think mentorship then, is then the Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice so yes. Yeah. I would have definitely handled that situation a lot different than, than Jerry Rice would have. Yeah. Because I believe I just believe that when T.O., you got to – T.O., once he got to where he got and he was established, it's hard to turn him around yeah. then. You got to get to him early, and you got to talk to him. And when you see things starting to get, instead of just letting it go, that's not my problem. That's somebody else's. You you take it upon yourself to go talk to the young yeah. man. Skip, what was Reggie Jackson? I'm just I, I'm trying to. He was another guy who was about himself, but a great player. Hey, when it was and time players to didn't like him. No, I, 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 I get, no, I know, but. Fought with Thurman Munson, had a fight but, with but Billy Martin. But Martin. Every, no, I'm just saying a, a lot of people didn't like not, Reggie. Everybody's not going to be Peyton Manning. Everybody's right. not going to be well-liked in the locker room. And that's okay. You do you. I mean, dude, we, can, we don't have to be friends, but let's be friendly. Mm-hmm. They ain't got to come over to my house because I damn sure ain't coming over to yours. We don't need to but, eat together. Right. We don't need but to do we here, let, right. let's, let's cohabitate. Let's right. get along for the betterment of the team. Let's win game. Hey, you go your way. I go mine. Boom. We good. Okay. So the ultimate irony to this discussion is that the guy I used to call Team Obliterator even rejected the greatest team ever assembled, his team. The Hall of Fame team. He said, no, I don't want to be part of that. But, but and guess a- what happened? At the Ray Nitschke luncheon, players <laughs> only, the room is split like a locker room. Half of them are pro T.O. and half are saying, what are we doing here? You know But, what? but, but why, why shouldn't he have the right to, to handle it the way he okay. wants? Well, he does. And it's nothing wrong with it. All right. When, when you, I got inducted for my play, right? My, my bus will be at, at, yep. in Canton and yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. I didn't throw a torch to the place, right. right? I didn't do any of that. I just think that he felt like he, he couldn't do it for whatever reason that was – his decision. I don't know why you're mad. What, you're mad at him that he didn't go. You're not no, mad at no, him, no. are you? No. How could you be so, mad? It was are, his decision. That's his decision. I was that's going. his day. I'm going just to go talk trash. That's, a, that's <laughs> what you go. Yeah, that's what I go for. Yeah. And the free drinks? No. No. <laughs> It's just hard to understand because it's so sacred to so many people mm-hmm. why you choose to not be a part of this team. This the most elite team in the world. It's like you getting the pull of surprise and say, nah, I should have got one for this other this other uh, article I did. Or like me not showing up to NABJ and the Yeah, story, yeah. I should have been oh, I, I should have been one this award. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a, hey, y'all give it to me, but I'm gonna have my celebration. Why did you keep him out so long? I don't know. Exactly. That's a good question. You know, actually. Skip, 32 years. They kept me know. out a long time. I think you should take a stand against the organization. <laughs> right? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, Rob. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Undisputed will be back on FS1 on Friday morning at 930 Eastern with special guest hosts. Be sure to tune in. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one.